Okay, once again, welcome back and uh, thanks for joining us on uh, this webinar today with uh, myself and uh, also uh, Tether Tools. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, tethering uh, with Capture One, what Capture One can do for you as a software solution and the hardware solutions uh, that are available from Tether Tools to uh, help you have a nice, safe, easy and seamless uh, workflow in the studio. Uh, just so you know who you're talking to, my name is David. I'm part of the software marketing team based out of uh, Copenhagen in Denmark. And also on the line, uh, we should have uh, Lauren. I don't know if uh, Lauren, you're there right now. Yes. Hi. Hello. Hi, Hi Lauren. Lauren <laughs> Hi. And uh, if you could just uh, introduce yourself as well. Yes, absolutely. I'm Lauren Capinos. I'm with Tether Tools. Um, we're based in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, and we make all kinds of uh, fun gear that enables you to shoot tethered in either a studio or location environment um, in a nice, uh, clean and safe way. And I look forward to sharing with you some of the great tips and tricks and uh, tools that we have to offer. Great. Fantastic. Um, the way uh, the webinar is going to run, it's probably going to be uh, around an hour. Um, question and answers throughout. So if you do have a question that springs to mind uh, about uh, today's subject, if you're on Mac or PC, if you look on the bottom of your GoTo webinar control panel, uh, you'll see a section there where you can input uh, a question and that will come uh, straight through to us. Uh, we do have a colleague helping us out collating uh, questions as well if need be, uh, if we get lots. So don't be shy. Please um, ask your questions on any of uh, today's uh, subject uh, in hand. I'm currently in a uh, Holborn Studios in London. So as I said in the introduction, I'll be going through some of the features of uh, Capture One. And I've got a setup here with all various different Tether Tools accessories, which I'll show you on the web. Uh, webcam as well so you can see exactly how uh, that's laid out and of course with all the tools in uh, Capture One for tethering you'll see why it's a really fantastic uh, solution to do so. And then if I hand over to Lauren again she'll just give you a quick explanation of what she's going to talk about as, as well. Absolutely, yes. Um, Tether Tools makes all kinds of um, interesting gear that allows you to connect your camera to any um, laptop, PC, um, iPad, tablet, and we have all kinds of uh, gear to do that safely, including Tether Pro cables um, and jerk stoppers, which help you with image port portability to a laptop. And then, of course, workstation tools um, for improving your on-shoot communication, um, whether you're shooting with clients or models or assistants, um, really improving how you communicate on the set. Um, and then, of course, also improving your workflow, um, getting your images there faster and getting them um, edited into the client quite a bit faster, exceeding their expectations. So I'll walk through all of the different ways to do that with you today, too. Great. Fantastic. Great, fantastic. OK, I think I will switch to uh, Capture One and then we'll get started with uh, a little look at uh, uh, the setup here in, uh, in the studio itself and all the various different equipment I've got. Now, I'm just going to uh, turn on my webcam, hopefully. So if we just give that a second to fire up. OK, it wasn't a very interesting display. So I'm just going to pan back a bit with as much uh, cable that I've got just to show you the setup. So I've got my uh, uh, Aero workstation here, Tether Tools Aero workstation. Then we just got a Nikon D800 tethered with just a, a small tabletop setup. And then moving around, I've got my iPad uh, mounted here with the Wally iPad mounting system, which we come back to uh, in a second. But we start at the... Uh, DSLR end and you can see see if I just uh, angle that down so we've got a good image on the uh, webcam so you can see uh, the jerk stopper system here if I just reach forward so that's just literally a little uh, tether and a snap that you can see that just takes the strain off of the cable and you can see if I just give that a wiggle Imagine that cable being uh, unfortunately pulled around. It just stops any of that flex on the socket itself. As we know that uh, the USB connections is not uh, the greatest uh, engineering uh, <laughs> around, unfortunately, but it just makes it so much more secure. And um, the cable's also from uh, Tether Tools. Nice high visible orange, so you can see it snaking across the floor. It uh, um, shows up nicely when uh, uh, the studio is dark, uh, for example. Uh, if we just go back over to uh, the workstation, uh, this is the Aero uh, workstation system. Uh, in terms of the cable management, we've got the similar thing with the jerk stopper as well. You can see my USB cable here. And then I've just got a similar item clipped 
on the side and this is called the XDC. This just is an extra caddy on the workstation where you can just pop in like an external hard drive or something. And then you see a similar fashion that uh, clipped here is just another device gripping the cable. So again, if I if I shake this cable around, it takes a lot of the flex out of, uh, of the connection, makes it much safer and uh, much more secure. Uh, securing uh, the laptop uh, to the table, you see we've got a strap here, so it's not going anywhere. And it's on a nice padded mount as well, just uh, for uh, a bit of extra comfort <laughs> for the laptop itself. Uh, moving down to the leg, if I just go a bit closer, this is the Stratmore which is just a great handy universal device. I've got it holding my uh, power grip, uh, sorry, power brick, for example, uh, for the laptop. It's a really good stretchy, uh, grippy fabric. So this is really secure, even though this is uh, uh, quite heavy and there's no chance of, uh, of uh, that falling off. And then good for cable management. I've got uh, the power cable just tracking down the tripod leg, Velcroed on as well, and also my... Uh, uh, various other power cables and network cables and so on. So that's the Stratmore, really uh, a handy little device. More about Capture Pilot later on, but what I just want to show is the mounting uh, system itself. Whoops, let's get that in the right direction. So we've got a multi-directional arm here. Uh, the iPad mini, so this is a, a mini, is just in a, a case which the iPad just uh, clips into. And then it has a uh, this great little device on the back. Lauren will have some better pictures to show it of you, which is just a really nice keyed device which just snaps into uh, the case itself. And then you can see I've got the iPad mounted uh, nicely on the arm here for using Capture Pilot, which you're going to learn more about uh, later on. So if I just pan back as much as I can, just to remind you, we've got the workstation here, little tabletop set up in the middle, and uh, then Capture Pilot over on uh, the right hand side. All the tether tool stuff in uh, in its working uh, environment. So as I mentioned, I've got uh, a Nikon D800 uh, connected up. And for those of you who, who haven't used, perhaps used uh, Capture One before, I'm just running it in uh, the basic workspace. So over on uh, the left-hand side, I'm just going to turn on a little cursor highlighter so it'd be easier for you to see where the mouse is. So there we go, that just helps you tracking uh, where the mouse is on screen. So if you're not used to using Capture uh, One before, over on the left hand side, this is uh, the tools. So we've got various different tool tabs. If I just click through, you'll be able to see the, the various different adjustments. The one we're going to be most interested in today is the second one, which is the capture tool tab. So that's where everything to do uh, with tethering is. Main viewer in the center of the screen, of course, and then a browser at, at the bottom where your uh, thumbnails come in. Um, all of that can be customized, of course, which is one of the strengths of Capture One. You can totally change uh, uh, the layout of the interface. So if you prefer, you know, the tools over on the right hand side or the browser over on the right hand side. Of course, you can uh, hide the browser, you can hide the tools for a nice uh, full screen view and so on. Then you can change all of that and save it as uh, your workspace. So if you're used to doing that in Photoshop and other applications, uh, it's exactly the same in uh, Capture One uh, itself. So you saw from uh, uh, the webcam that I had a, a Nikon D800 uh, attached. And you can see that over here in the camera tool. So we've got Nikon D800. Uh, the second option here allows me to choose uh, which uh, file format I can uh, shoot directly to Capture One. So I'm just shooting RAW, but I could shoot JPEG TIFF or a combination of RAW and JPEG, for example. That's just the options from uh, the Nikon. So that might vary camera to camera. Uh, I can select my ISO and, of course, uh, the white balance as well. And, of course, we can trigger by clicking the button there, we can trigger and shoot directly uh, into Capture One, and then you'll see the image pop up on a screen like so. You'll see the next part here, camera controls. Again, we can control everything directly from Capture One. So once my camera is hooked up and it's instant, all I need to do is, uh, is uh, plug in the USB cable. Uh, then I have full control over, for example, the program shooting mode, shutter, like so. Uh, aperture EV adjust. If I had a flash gun attached, then I'd be able to change uh, certain things of the uh, uh, flash gun uh, as well. 
Now, I, as I said, I have a Nikon uh, D800 uh, attached, but it's not exclusive to Nikon D800s, of course. You can tether two Capture One models from Canon, from Nikon, from Leaf, and of course, uh, Phase One. If you want to know if your camera is uh, compatible or not, just go to uh, phase1.com and the Capture One pages. Uh, you'll be able to look at all the different manufacturers and whether your camera, camera's raw file is supported and whether you can uh, tether or not uh, as well. As you saw when we uh, capture, I'll just click that button again. Pretty rapidly, you see the pending bar come in and then the uh, image is, uh, is ready on screen. Uh, if we just have a look up to the camera menu here, I'll talk about a couple of other features uh, for tethered shooting. Uh, the first one is uh, composition mode. If I activate that, you'll see a number of circles uh, pop up on, uh, on screen like so. Composition mode is designed for when you first set up your shot in the studio and you're getting your lighting correct, composition and so on. So if I make a capture again in composition mode, I can use the shortcut key uh, command K. Uh, if you notice that our current shot, if we look down here in the thumbnail browser is 294, number 294. If I take another capture, then you'll see that we're now at 295, but 294 has disappeared. So what composition mode does, it only saves the last capture, just to prevent a buildup of all those uh, images on the hard drive. Uh, of course, the reason why we put these symbols up on here is to prevent you doing a, a whole shoot, of course, in composition mode, which uh, would be a bit of a disaster, of course. And we can just uh, turn that off as well. Uh, the second option, hot folder. Now this is great if uh, you don't have a camera that's supported by Capture One, but you have some other means of tethering it to your computer. Then you can enable the hot folder, which means uh, the folder that you've designated as your capture folder will be watched by Capture One. So as soon as a new image arrives into that folder, it will automatically show up in uh, Capture One. Um, so just like shooting tethered really. So you can still take advantage of the great raw conversion of Capture One, even if uh, your camera isn't supported directly uh, for tethering. Uh, you can see an option here, which uh, you'll probably uh, never change, but there's a couple of uh, handy features. By default, this option is set to when ready, which means if I take a picture now, for example, uh, you'll see the thumbnail pop up uh, first down here but it only shows in the viewer when it's completely ready to show. That means it has the correct ICC profile applied and uh, white balance and all the various other raw conversion things uh, that we do. If you really want to see uh, the image in a hurry, then you can say uh, immediately. The more useful options are never. So if you want to prevent the images popping up on screen as you shoot, um, obviously it's very distracting for clients and models to see images popping up on a, a nice big screen as you're shooting. So if you turn that off, then it prevents the images coming uh, up in the viewer. They're only going to appear in, uh, in the browser. Also, the handy feature auto pause if you're working with a, a digital tech. Uh, if you're shooting and you ask them to open an image and check focus, for example, they can do so. Uh, you can carry on shooting. Uh, it will pause the automatic loading of images in the viewer. They can check focus. They can make adjustments. Uh, when they stop using Capture One, then automatically new images will pop up in the viewer again uh, once more. So that's really good if you're working with a, a digital tech. Uh, in this case, orientation is handled automatically by the Nikon. And you'll see the Capture option there with the shortcut key, Command K. So of course, if I click that, uh, then the image uh, pops up. On screen as well. Now in terms of speed, um, you've seen me shooting uh, from the laptop and that comes in nice and fast. If I just go over to uh, the camera itself, hopefully you can hear the camera fire in my microphone if I just uh, lean closer to it. So if I just fire off several shots like so, you can see them popping in on the pending bar over here. So you can see it's by no means slow in terms of triggering on the camera. So don't think that because you're tethered to uh, a computer um, that it's going to slow you down. It definitely isn't. Uh, certainly if you use a decent quality cable, optimize your system in terms of plenty of hard drive space and uh, I'm shooting to an SSD, uh, which helps, uh, then you can have a really nice, fast, uh, slick uh, uh, workflow speed shooting directly into the uh, application. So that's all your camera controls available uh, in uh, in those uh, two tools. 
Uh, one other thing that we can do, which is great if your camera supports it. So if you have a Canon or Nikon, which has uh, the live view functionality on the back on the LCD, uh, then you can do the same uh, in Capture One as well. So if you look at this uh, icon here, this starts the live view. I just run the live view for a short time because in past webinars, it sometimes interfered with uh, with the sound because of uh, uh, my headset's on USB, the camera's on USB and so on, that there's a lot of uh, action going on and a lot of data coming down the USB. So we just run it for a few seconds. So if we turn on live video, you'll see you'll get an instant preview of uh, the set in itself. If I click on the uh, large head here, then that will zoom to 100%, and then I can use the navigator to browse to a particular area of uh, the image. And the nice thing is, you see these tools down here, these buttons, these control the focus. So if I click this one, then you'll see the image pop out of focus. If I click this one, then it goes back. So this is coarse focus, the two end tabs, and this is finer focus as you go towards the, the center. So you can have a really nice finite control of the focus without having to uh, uh, touch the camera. Let's zoom uh, out again. In terms of the refresh rate, if I just um, uh, put my hand in front of the camera, you'll see uh, it runs between sort of 10 to 30 frames per second. Uh, your webinar is only running about 10 frames a second, so it might not look as smooth, but it's pretty much as fast as what you're used to seeing on the back of the camera. So it's uh, great for uh, composition and, of course, getting your lighting uh, dialed in and so on. There's also a feature here called uh, Overlay. And what Overlay allows you to do is drop in um, uh, any kind of image file onto the live view over the top. So if you've got a magazine cover that you need to fit to uh, and you've been handed a sketch by the art director, then you can just drop that in on top of the live view image to aid your composition. And you can do that in the main viewer as well, not just uh, in the live view. Uh, you've also got some grids and guides, etc., to help your uh, composition. So let's uh, close that back down. So that's live view, simply activated by hitting uh, the live view button there. As I said, available on cameras that have live view themselves uh, enabled uh, on the camera body. I also want to show you uh, a great plugin that we have with uh, Profoto uh, lighting in itself, light control. Uh, so if you're aware that Profoto have their own application, uh, which you can run to give remote control of the uh, flash equipment. Um, you can also do the same in Capture One if you download a plugin from profoto.com. Um, what I should do, actually, I'll just show you the necessary equipment that you need. So if we utilize our uh, webcam once more, okay, you should uh, be able to see. I can see uh, I can see that the webcam's active. I just don't know exactly <laughs> uh, what it's showing. Hang on, let's just get the uh, preferences up. Okay. Okay. So basically, on top of the camera, you see you've got my uh, Profoto Air remote. So that's just ch triggering the D4 pack, which is sat over in the corner like so but the vital part of kit that we need is uh, on the top of my usb hub is just a little pro photo air usb stick uh, and that does the transmission from the laptop to uh, the d4 pack that's uh, sat uh, over in the corner uh, so let's just I'll stop sharing the webcam for the moment okay so that's the equipment uh, that you need and of course the available plugin from uh, Profoto itself and what it means I can do is that if we just bring out the light control into the middle so we can see it uh, a bit easier means I get full control over uh, my lighting directly from uh, Capture One so you can see here that we've got a d4 pack 2400 the current setting is 4.2 so if I want to go up by a stop I can and the pack beeps in the background. Let's just take a shot, and you'll probably see that we've now gone uh, a bit overexposed. Yes, we have. So I can come back down to stop, and the pack will dump uh, when it's ready. And then if I capture once more, uh, you should be able to see that we're now back to the correct exposure. So as well as controlling a tenth of a stop, then you can go in 0.1 increments uh, there, like so. 
and you can see the flash output value here. Now, as I said, I've only got one pack, but you could have multiple packs set up and you can arrange those in different groups. So if you've got your rear lights and your key light and your main light, then you can divide all those up into different groups and have individual control over all of them. Uh, of course, as well as the different groups, I've only got uh, one group, so it makes no difference, but you can control the master, so you could bring all the lights up by the same amount, or you could control uh, the groups uh, individually. Uh, we can also, of course, fire a, a test shot. Uh, we can turn the modeling light on and off uh, for this button here, and we can turn the individual lights on and off uh, as well. Now, the really nice thing is, is that we can link our output to our aperture or ISO. So if I say link to uh, group A and my aperture, so you can see that our current output is 4.4. Uh, so if I change to uh, F11, for example, now you can see that the flash output has been increased automatically to 5.4. So it compensates. So if I make uh, another capture, then we should have pretty much roughly uh, the same exposure value there we go, as we did uh, on the previous shot. So it does mean that once you've dialed in your all your exposure levels, if you then suddenly decide that you want to close down a bit or open up a bit, you can do so, and then all the lighting automatically uh, compensates. So that's a great little bit of uh, uh, time saving uh, for you. So that's the Profoto uh, light control, only available uh, for uh, Profoto currently, and you must have the air equipped equipment. So that's, you need the USB stick on your computer, the Profoto Air transmitter, if you want to uh, trigger wirelessly, of course, and a compatible uh, Profoto Air kit. But that's just another bit of control that you can have directly from uh, Capture One. Uh, the last bit that I want to show you is uh, Capture Pilot. Uh, if we look at Capture Pilot here, what Capture Pilot is, is a way to, uh, with the help of actually some Tether Tools hardware, is a way to uh, get people away from your capture station. There's nothing worse than, as you're shooting, uh, to have um, a huddle of people uh, around your capture station as you're shooting, watching uh, the images come in. So this is one use where uh, Capture Pilot can uh, work really nicely. And what Capture Pilot is, is two things. It's a iOS application for your iPod, uh, iPad, and iPhone. And it's also a web application for any other web-enabled uh, um, device. So what I'm going to do, hopefully, with uh, uh, application is actually show you what my uh, iPad is seeing. So hopefully you should be able to see my iPad on screen right now. Uh, so what we've got, if I just, I'm just swiping up and down on my iPad screen now. So what we've got basically is uh, the ability for um, Capture One to uh, share the contents of our Capture folder or actually any other folder you choose uh, to Capture Pilot on a, on the uh, Apple device. So I can stro scroll down a, a contact sheet of images uh, like show. So any image that I want to see, I just tap on it once and then it opens it up into uh, uh, the main uh, window like so. If I double tap, then it will zoom in and then you'll be able to see if uh, we got uh, our image in focus or not. And yes, it looks pretty good. And of course, we can uh, scroll around like so to uh, check uh, uh, the full details. Double tap, and that takes me back out to the fit screen like so. If I click on the little histogram icon, then that shows me a histogram of the image, which I can move uh, around anywhere. I can turn that off. We can have a star rating. So while your client sat <clears throat> excuse me, in the corner of the studio on the comfy sofa, they can actually see the images and give them a, a one to five star rating or a color tag, for example, and that's synchronized back to Capture One. So once they've done all their star rating uh, and so on, that can be seen directly in Capture One itself. Uh, the really nice option is, is this one, which is a camera control. Of course, this isn't useful for your clients. This is where it becomes more useful for yourselves, for your digital techs, and for stylists, for example. So you can see all the different uh, controls of the current attached camera. If I tap on the MRAW Auto section, you can see I can change the program mode I'm shooting in and, and image compression and uh, 
white balance as you can see there uh, we can change our shutter and aperture so i could go back down to uh, f9 or whatever if uh, if i wanted to uh, we could change our shutter speed um, pro photo pack just beeped telling me that it compensated from the aperture change and of course we can click the silver button and we can take a shot and then it will come pop up straight back into uh, capture pilot so even as you're shooting capture pilot can be continuously updated so somebody can watch the shoot uh, as it um, progresses. It has a great use for yourselves. Um, you saw the little stand that I was using earlier. You can keep uh, the lighting stand with the uh, Wally iPad mount from Tether Tools next to your camera. Just gives you a second monitor to, to look at the shot without having to return to uh, the capture station. If you're hand holding the iPad, you can hand that off to your stylist. So of course, if you're asking them to move objects around in the set, they can see the exact result as soon as it pops up on their uh, iPad. It's good for your digital techs if they're on the set adjusting lighting. Then of course, as you shoot, they can see the image pop up. And then when you're directing them to change lighting, they can get a much better idea by what you mean as they can see the image uh, in front of them uh, on the, the iPad themselves. If you don't have access to uh, an iPad, let's just go back to Capture One. Uh, you can see in uh, Capture Pilot here, on the web interface, this works for any other web enabled device. So this could be an Android phone or an Android tablet or another laptop, for example. All you have to do is distribute this IP address. And if I just click on that, you'll see what happens. It loads it up into uh, Safari, uh, similar way. All I then have to do is click on an image and that opens it up full screen. And you can still do your star rating, for example, and you can still do your color tags like so. The only thing you can't do with Capture Pilot for web is uh, to uh, zoom into 100% and have the camera control. But you can still use it as the armchair browser and uh, rating uh, option and so on. Of course, if you don't want your clients to have the ability to shoot and to rate images, you can turn all those various permissions off in the uh, Capture Pilot uh, interface. So remember, the only stipulation really for Capture Pilot to work is that you have to be on the same network. So I'm currently hardwired into the network here at the studio, and the iPad, of course, is wireless. But because they're joined by the same router, then they can, can communicate uh, perfectly uh, with each other. So Capture Pilot, great for tethering for you and uh, for your clients and uh, for your uh, assistants uh, as well. So let's just pop uh, Capture Pilot back down on the dock. So that pretty much hopefully gives you an idea of uh, what Capture One uh, can do for you in terms of um, tethering. Just to recap, you've got your full camera control in terms of uh, format, ISO, and, and other things. Live view for composition with overlay to aid your composition. Direct capture from uh, Capture One itself and also from the camera at a uh, high speed. Uh, Profoto uh, light control if you have the compatible Profoto equipment. Uh, capture Pilot uh, to be able to uh, enhance uh, the experience further for yourself, clients, and your assistants, and also full control over the camera in terms of shutter, aperture, and so on. And it's really very simple plug and play. You just hook up your camera to USB and uh, start shooting. Very, very simple. So I think what I'll do now is that um, I'll hand you back over to uh, Lauren. Uh, very shortly. Uh, I'm very just shortly. going to just uh, uh, give, give Lauren the Lauren ability to show her screen. There we go. So I'll hand off to you, Lauren. Thanks. Okay. Sounds great. Thank you, David. Um, with all of the um, amazing features and, and tools that Capture One and Capture Pilot offer, as David has just explained, um, you really can shoot tethered in any situation now. And I think once, um, if you've already been shooting tethered, you probably understand how, how great the benefits are for communication with your clients and with your assistants. Um, if you haven't started tethering yet, once you do, it becomes something that um, you get used to doing on a regular basis. And whether you're shooting in studio or on location, uh, the ability to shoot tethered is really um, available to you in any location now with a lot of the gear that Tether Tools um, offers. So as David had mentioned, connecting the camera to the computer and having a functional workstation in any um, shooting environment is what we're designed to do um, and to help you uh, set up wherever you need to be. So in walking through some of our 
gear here, the first thing that you need, of course, is for any camera to connect to any laptop or computer, um, a cable connection. And uh, Tether Pro cables offer um, high visibility orange or black options, um, the same cable regardless, just the difference in color. But the um, cable themselves uh, are offered in USB 2.0 and USB 3.0, which cover most DSLR cameras, are either a USB 2.05 pin or 8 pin or the new USB 3.0 super speed. And now the phase backs also have the USB 3.0 um, A to B um, port attachment. And so it's really camera dependent which cable you use. Um, we recommend a 15 foot cable for shooting tethered so that you have some flexibility in where you're moving around your set um, that you can walk around, have the camera attached and not be um, tied so closely to your computer station. Uh, if you would like to go longer than a 15 foot cable, we do have active extensions for all the USB cables. Um, there's a 2.0 active extension in increments of 16 feet. You want an active extension booster to keep your signal strong if you are daisy chaining cables together for longer tethering distances. With 2.0, um, you can actually daisy chain four of those cables together with your 15 foot base cable and get up to 80 feet of distance in your tethered work. Um, flow. With the USB 3.0 cables, um, which currently the Nikon D800 and D800e are the only camera using that um, super speed USB 3.0 cable, but that you only can go a 15 foot base cable and a 16 foot active extension. The reason for that is that many of the computer ports um, are only operating at USB 2.0 speed, and so you want that connection to be consistent from camera through cable and into computer, all working at the same speed. Um, if you are connected at 3.0 all the way, you can go longer than the 32 feet, but if your computer is still at 2.0, we recommend sticking with just 32 feet. If you're shooting with um, a phase camera or another camera that requires a firewire cable, we do have all the connections for the older um, 400 and the newer 800 specs and all the different pin configurations. And then if you'd like to shoot with a CAT network cable, um, we do have all of the different CAT cat network cables in different lengths as well. Um, and then for video transfer and those things, the Tether Pro line also has HDMI, AC, and D cables. So really, if you'd like to get your images from any uh, camera to any computer, we can help you do that. Um, as David had shown you, the key element to shooting tethered is making sure that your cable connection is always strong and that the port um, is secure. So the jerk stopper cable management device, here's a, a closer up view of it. Essentially it ties onto the camera strap loop on any um, camera and then the cable clamp slides on and clamps the cable creating an anchor. Um, it's designed so that if you yank or tug on the ca uh, cable, it won't come out um, of the port and it also won't damage your port. So you don't get the bend that you typically would if someone were to trip over your cable and, and possibly damage your cable or your port. The quick release um, snap there in the middle is designed so that if someone really yanks or tugs very hard or someone really trips over it, um, the jerk stopper is designed to come loose or the little plastic piece may break before your camera comes down, which is exactly what you would want it to do to protect your gear. So that secures you on the camera side. There's also computer jerk stopper um, devices as well. Uh, as you can see, the top one there in the middle is the clip-on device that clips right onto your tether table. Um, there's also a USB port in the middle there. You can plug an anchor um, jerk stopper into your USB or RJ45 network port or you could um, flat mount it with a Velcro flat mount that goes onto the bottom of a table or desk depending on your shooting situation. If you are using active extension cables, um, you want to make sure that the active extension connection is secure as well. The jerk stopper inline devices are essentially little twist devices. They wrap around your cable. Um, they're designed to hold up to 8.5 millimeter cables. If your cable is thinner than that, just wrap a little gaff tape around it for a nice secure fit. And if anyone yanks or pulls on your cables all the way through your connection to the computer, um, your cables will stay connected and your um, Capture One session will remain um, intact throughout your entire shoot. So now that you have your cable and you're um, connected from your camera to your computer, what you need is a place to put your computer. Um, and the idea behind uh, the Tether Table Aero system is that it's modular so you can create your own workstation depending on what your shooting needs are. This is a very popular setup called the Crossbar. It allows you to mount your table and your laptop on the same tripod as your camera. Um, this is handy for a number of people. Some people don't want to be quite this close um, to their laptop, but a lot of people use this setup if you're shooting and you just want a place to put your camera um, if you're hand-holding and not um, shooting on tripod. You also, of course, can put 
the tether table on different stand than your camera is mounted on. And here's how you would do that. Um, as David showed, the underneath of every tether table comes with a Lazio 4 Pro bracket. The bracket's the four because it has four different attachments. You can see there the quarter 20 in the middle, a 3 8 thread, a 5 8 studio stud, so you can put it on a light stand, or an Arca plate dovetail. So this really gives you flexibility to mount your tether table on any existing stand that you already have. You don't need to go buy a new stand. You can just use something that um, may be in your studio or in your gear um, closet already. The table system, as I mentioned, is meant to be modular. So the table comes with the bracket and the carrying case you see there on the bottom left corner. Um, from there, you can accessorize the table as you'd like. So the pad that you see underneath the laptop is a heat-reducing non-slip pro pad. Make sure that your um, table is protected and that your laptop stays in place. Uh, there's also a secure strap that goes over the top that keeps things um, nice and tight and then external drive compartments. Um, when shooting with Capture One, we always recommend um, shooting raw to your um, card or to a backup drive and transferring your images. Um, if you'd like to um, just transfer the RAWs or the JPEGs, it's up to you however you set that up. But having a backup drive um, while you're shooting creates that redundancy immediately, which is a really safe way to go with your images. There's also accessories such as a cup holder that clips on, um, hooks that allow you to hang things from your table so you can keep other gear nearby. Um, there's a brochure holder if you're doing any kind of marketing shoots at events, that type of thing, and a peel-in-place mouse pad um, that goes on the side of a larger table. The tables come in black or silver, and they um, come in different sizes as well. So if you have as small as a MacBook 13, there's a table specifically for the MacBook 13, 15, and 17. And then there's more generic size tables, the largest being a 22 by 16 inch table. So you can really create a workstation and desktop anywhere you need it, um, which is very handy. For those who love to shoot to an iMac and want that large screen and just to be shooting directly in and getting your post-processing going a little faster, um, we do make an iMac table as well. This is a really popular in-studio solution because you can drop it right onto a light stand, um, secure the iMac down with the crossbar. Uh, it's got a padded um, bar on the top and underneath the iMac base, and it gives you a really nice secure table. This, of course, is our largest table. It's the 22 by 16. And then the versatility with this is if you're not shooting using your iMac and you want to take it on location, you can remove the bar, uh, put a laptop on it, and use it as a regular tether table um, out in the field. So the versatile workstation idea is that the tether table could go on location with you um, or just be an extra workstation for, for any purpose. Um, we have here a photographer in the middle who's shooting, has a laptop set up on one table, camera in the middle, and then gear all set up on the other uh, table just to have things so they're not on the floor and that people aren't walking over them and things. Just to keep your gear nice and tidy um, is really helpful on a shoot, of course. It's also nice to have your gear out so you're not digging in your bag for each next accessory or cable that you need. Um, with the bottom picture there, you can see a script supervisor, so if any of you are doing um, crossover DSLR filmmaking, um, the table comes in handy for uh, just a workstation for other uh, team members in studio as well. And then here you can see the versatility of mounting the tether table anywhere. While it can go on any stand, it also can attach to most of your traditional photography clamps, arms, grips, so you can really mount your iPad anywhere, excuse me, mount your laptop anywhere. Um, I'll get into the iPad mounting next, you can do that anywhere too. Um, so lots of great versatility with the workstation and you really just set up exactly what you need. Moving into the iPad, um, with uh, Capture Pilot and the ability to send images to multiple screens at the same time, um, we want to make sure that your gear is always safe and secure and that your um, iPad is mounted so that someone can come up, interact with it, access it um, if you don't want them hand-holding it. Uh, this gentleman is Mark Katauka. He's a um, theater photographer in the San Francisco Bay Area. He today was shooting a, uh, a children's production and wanted to show the actors what, they, uh, what their images look like. So shooting into the iPad and then allowing people to scroll through and see um, on set is really handy. The iPad system, as David showed you, um, is all based around the Wally locking case. The way the system works is that the each iPad has its own specific case. So if you have an iPad 1, 2, 3, or Retina, or the iPad mini, you just simply purchase the case and then put the case on the back of your iPad. It keeps your camera, all of your speakers, your ports available, and then it has this handy locking X um, receptor in the middle of it. So that X cutout um, integrates with all of the different attachments that you see on the screen here. So there's options for mounting to a tripod, stands, arms, clips, VESA mounts, wall mounts, suction mounts, 
um, a hand grip, actually a wearable option as well that I'll show you. So it's really a versatile system that allows you to mount your iPad and use it in any situation. Um, specifically in photography situations with some of the, off the items that I'll walk through, but then also in daily use and entertainment um, uses as well. So the way the, um, the system works is this, again, is based on the four attachments on the Connect iPad mount. So you put the iPad case on the back of your iPad and then lock this Connect bracket in, turning the X into a 45-degree turn. It will lock in place, and then you'll have, again, the four attachments, quarter 23.8, the 5A Studio Stud for say a man for no magic arm, and the Arca Dovetail. So now you can mount your iPad in any different situation. Here we have um, tethering to the iPad, and we also have the ability to, um, as David showed, shoot into uh, Capture One and then push images to Capture Pilot for guests at an event to see, for clients to see. Just provides a really nice, secure way um, to mount the iPad and, and have people interact with it. Here are a couple of different configurations that you can see. They're putting it on a crossbar, on the top of a tripod, or on an arm and clamp system. It's a rather robust system, the Connect Bracket, and so we also developed a Connect Light iPad mount. And this creates some really nice versatility, especially for mobile um, activity with your iPad if you're taking it out on location. The first device there you see is the Connect Light Bracket. It has an X on the back as well, and then a quarter 20 uh, receptor on the back and on the side of the Connect Light Bracket so that you could connect it to a sling strap such as a Black Rapid and tie the, uh, excuse me, screw the, uh, D-ring into the side of the iPad and now you can actually wear it hands-free. So if you were out shooting um, and wanted your clients looking at your laptop, you the photographer could just be wearing the iPad and checking things as you were going as well. The same device allows you to mount to any um, armor stand and then you also can take the lollipop pin that comes with it and screw it into the back for a desk mount. So lots of versatility in just that one bracket um, for how you actually use your iPad. The fun thing then, of course, is you can take it on the golf cart course to a grocery cart. You can mount it on an airplane tray table or um, car headrest. There's lots of different ways to use your iPad, of course, in different settings, whether it's uh, your professional or your uh, personal uses. Um, there's also, of course, ability to mount and use the iPad as a teleprompter or as a uh, monitor in different locations. And then, of course, if you're musically inclined, having the iPad handy for um, reading sheet music is, is a nice way to use it as well. So lots of versatility in how you mount it. There also is a desk stand called the uh, Wally iPad Pivot. This mirrors the iMac base, which is a really beautiful, uh, beautifully designed base. So the Pivot stand does the same thing. It locks right into the back of the iPad. And with the Wally system, because it's a rotational lock, you can turn the iPad into portrait or landscape um, at, with a very quick turn and lock into the new, uh, uh, new orientation. So it's very versatile in that way as well. And then a lot of our um, clients and photographers that we work with, we see them using this iPad setup as a client presentation tool uh, because it is very professional. It rotates 180 degrees over. So you could be sitting on one side of the desk, set up your portfolio, pass it across the desk to a client and have them slide through the images that you've taken. Um, and it's a great way to be able to talk about the images with your client as well. The hand strap is one of our most popular items. This is really handy for um, if you're shooting into Capture Pilot, uh, excuse me, Capture One and giving your iPad over with all those great lockout controls that David showed you. Um, the client can be holding the iPad in a comfortable way as opposed to holding it and possibly slipping or dropping it. This is a really nice way to actually wear the iPad on your hand. It's a very comfortable fit um, and just gives you a little bit more added security um, with your gear. In addition to uh, mounting your laptop and your iPad or tablet, we also have options for mounting to, uh, phones. This is our LookLock smartphone mount, and this gives you the option to use your smartphone um, via the iOS um, system with Capture Pilot, or um, if you don't have an, an iPhone, to be able to use your smartphone um, and just use the web-enabled uh, system to see the images yourself. Um, you can mount to the top of a DSLR through a hot shoe attachment or onto our accessory extension bar where you can then mount multiple things onto the top of your camera. This is really handy um, for viewing the images yourself. It's also really fun um, if you're shooting kids and pets to be able to put some videos up there to attract their attention while you're shooting. So you really um, some fun tools and uh, you can use them in many, many different ways. So going from the small to the much larger, we also have the option to mount your um, 
larger cinema displays or uh, computers and large screens onto light stands as well. This system here is called the view monitor mounts. Uh, the first one here you see is rated for up to 85 pounds. Uh, so you can mount an 85 pound monitor on a light stand. We of course recommend that you use a sandbag with that, but it uh, comes with a VESA compliant 75 and 100 um, uh, screws and then there's also adapter plates so if you have a larger monitor up to 85 pounds and a different VESA configuration um, we can help you get that mounted onto your light stand in studio as well. The other two um, adapters you see over here are the Go View and the Local View. The Go View just has a quarter 20 and an ARCA plate for mounting onto a tripod and then the Local View again you'll see that same four options gives you um, some flexibility on where you want to mount either to a tripod or a light stand. And these two brackets are weighted uh, for up to 35 pound monitors so it gives you a lot of versatility in where you want to send your images and how people interact with them. If you're working on a large set and you need multiple people seeing your images this is often a nice way to uh, allow everyone to see what you're shooting and move it away a little bit from um, the, a small laptop screen. So lots of options, lots of versatility, and um, you can really create a system, a, a setup how you like. So that kind of takes you through the basics of the line, and I believe we have some questions that have come in um, that David and I will go ahead and try to answer for you now. Yeah, thanks, Lauren. Thanks for the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, for the um, overview. Um, I can see a question that came in from uh, Murray was asking if you're using Capture Pilot uh, web option, could the client view images remotely via the internet if they're on the office on uh, the other side of their world, uh, other side of the world? Uh, yes, uh, you could uh, in theory. Um, you would need to know your external IP address, which is pretty easy to look up with uh, a few kind of free uh, facilities online. And then on your router, you would need to, to be able to forward people to uh, port 80, uh, and then they would uh, be able to do it. Um, in actual, it kind of sounds a bit complicated and not necessarily easy to explain over voice. Um, but I think uh, um, it could be a good, subject for our phase one blog actually and I'll actually work towards uh, writing a blog post up to show you how to do it but yes it's possible in theory you just need to know a little bit about internet routing options and so on um, so there's a question for you Lauren Michael was asking uh, do jerk stoppers work with all cameras Yes, they do. Um, all cameras that we've come across have uh, a small uh, either camera strap loop or loop on them that you can tie the jerk stopper to. There's always a place on the camera to be able to create that anchor. So yes, we haven't come across a, a model yet that it doesn't work with. <laughs> That's good. And I saw Scott is asking, can I mount another monitor computer other than an iMac or MacBook on the tether tools mounts and tables? Yes, you can. Um, any computer that has a VESA compliant um, uh, attachment on the back, the VESA is sort of the standard square um, configuration or screw configuration, and you can mount um, all different kinds of monitors. Um, ISO monitors was a question we got in the last session. Um, those are, are VESA compliant. Um, the back of the Macs and the cinema displays have the Mac proprietary. Um, mounting option, but there is an adapter for that. So yes, if you have a particular um, uh, monitor and you're not sure if it is VESA compliant, give us a call or send me an email and we'll be happy to um, coordinate with you and get you the right attachment so that you can mount on a light stand using those brackets. And I guess that the, the system that I'm using is, um, well, my uh, laptop is a 15-inch laptop and, and it's they're quite big, the, the Mac laptop, so um, easily mm -hmm. any other kind of, you know, PC or other Apple laptop um, is going to fit quite snugly on uh, on this table, I guess. Yes, the, the laptop tables come in all different sizes. The largest is a 22 by 16 inch, and okay. that would give you enough space for a large PC um, laptop as well as an external uh, mouse if you would like that much space. Uh, we also do custom tables, so if there's something specific that someone needs, um, we make all of our gear here in the United States. Um, all of our metal work is done here, and we do custom orders as well. So let us know if there's something specific that you're looking for. And I see Thomas is asking, are there dealers in the whole world, or do you have to buy everything online from uh, the USA? <laughs> no, we're uh, we're about three and a half uh, years into growing our business globally, and we, we do have stores all over the world now. So uh, if you go to tethertools.com, on the top um, navigation bar, there is a store locator button. If you click on the store locator, you'll find all of our worldwide locations. 
um, and uh, find the closest to you and whether that's walking in or ordering online there's uh, a way to get the gear to you uh, in in country hopefully good stuff um, and that same goes for phase one as well of course that we've got our partner located too um, you can buy uh, capture one of course on our own store or with partners but we've also got uh, an offer for you today as well let's just uh, skip forward uh, to uh, that oh before we come to the offer I would just to give you an idea of some uh, additional uh, ways to help you. Uh, from our side on uh, phase one, you've, we've got our help site, help.phase1.com, easy to remember. That's a complete searchable um, instruction manual for Capture One Pro 7. Uh, Blog.phase1.com, which I briefly mentioned earlier, that has a great tip every week about uh, working with uh, Capture One, written by myself and uh, my colleagues, uh, and also guest photographers uh, as well. And phase1.com slash events is where you need to go to find out about forthcoming webinars. Um, from Tethertool side, uh, blog-wise, they have tethertalk.com. Uh, uh, and to look up your cable compatibility, then you've got the tethertools.com slash plugging in. And with regards to this webinar, I'm going to edit it together tomorrow. I'm going to include some uh, DSLR cam footage of the various different Tether Tools bits, which is going to be better quality than the webcam. And then we'll host it uh, on our webinar video page, which you'll get a link to in a follow up email. And Lauren said to me earlier, which you can confirm, of course, Lauren, that you'll put it up on uh, uh, the Tether Talk blog uh, as well. Yes, we will, absolutely. Um, the Tether Talk uh, blog has all kinds of great information, education, cable compatibility. Um, camera compatibility uh, and lots of, of great behind the scenes views of photographers shooting tethered in the different setups that have worked for them. So certainly check that out. And then I believe we have our offer um, as well. Yep, I'll just bring um, up this, uh, this link. So uh, but Lauren, I'll let you explain better what's in the kit, but it's basically a great sure. bundle of uh, Capture One and the, the Pro Kit together. Sure. If you liked what you saw today and you'd like to get any piece of it, um, you can certainly do so separately, but we're running a special this week um, with Capture One and Tether Tools, the entire Pro Kit, which is the full table system, cables, jerk stoppers, um, the secure strap, Pro Pad, Strap More, the whole system, plus a copy of the latest version of Capture One Pro 7. Um, with all of your uh, accessories together is actually running on special on our website this week and as well at many of our dealers um, and that's a hundred dollars off the entire kit together so uh, that offer is running through the end of this week so if you'd like to jump on in and take advantage of that now's a great time to uh, get your full setup fantastic fantastic um i think that nearly brings us to uh the end of our webinar i just had a quick look i don't think we've got uh any more uh, questions um, popping in. Um, so I think all it remains for us to do, uh, certainly on my side of things, is just to say uh, thank you very much to uh, Lauren, of course, for joining us today and uh, everyone uh, listening. Also, thank you to Holborn Studios, where I am, and also UK Light, which kindly provided all the, the Tether Tools equipment today, one of uh, the UK uh, suppliers. So certainly hope to see you again on future webinars. And uh, um, as I said, in 24 hours time, you'll get a follow up email, which has a link to where the webinars are going to be stored. But don't forget to check out the uh, Tether Talk uh, blog as well. So uh, that's a thank you and a goodbye from me and then anything else you want to say Lauren and of course uh, thanks for joining me today as well absolutely thank you very much to everyone who joined hope you learned a little something new about uh, both of our offerings and yep. we look forward to working with you please give us a call if you have any questions at all great thanks very much and talk to you soon thank you. bye now bye bye